Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to today's lesson. I'm glad and happy that you've managed to tune in. You've managed to wake up early and sit so that we can learn together from God's word. Uh, through this time when we've been staying home, I just want to say a very big thank you for the every time that you have uh, logged in to learn from the scriptures. Well, last Sunday, we had Antimwenya go through a revision of a series of um, lessons that we had on the Christian pilgrimage. Today, however, we are moving away from that line of lessons and we are moving to a very different line of uh, series. This time, we are going to look at people who followed Christ. People who followed Christ. Well, there are quite a number of people who followed Christ. Today we are looking at a young couple, a very special couple. Most of the time, when we talk about this couple, we get excited because it reminds us of a huge festivity for us Christians. Before we go deep into the lesson, let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you for this day, praying, Heavenly Father, that as we sit at your feet to listen to your word, that, Lord, you open our hearts and open our minds to listen to your word, Heavenly Father, and learn from it. We ask, Lord, for this through your loving Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, now, I'm very excited because the couple I'm talking about today is Mary and Joseph. And yes, every time you hear about Mary and Joseph, I know what comes to your mind. You're already thinking, Christmas. But I'm sorry, we are still just in October and we're not going to talk about Christmas today. But the couple, Mary and Joseph, remind us of the birth of Christ. But instead of focusing on the birth of Christ today, we are going to look at their lives as Christians, their lives as people who followed Christ, their lives as people who obeyed God in everything they did. These two are not exactly sinless because they were born in a world of sin, but they lived lives that showed that they actually followed Christ. To unlock the story, we are going to read from the book of Luke. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke chapter 1, and we are reading from verse 26 uh, all the way to 38. I'm waiting for you to turn your Bibles. Okay. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 begins. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what matter of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered, and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. 
Therefore also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, when you read this story and the account of Mary with the encounter of the angel, I can just imagine what it could have been like. She probably started out her day as an ordinary day. Maybe she got up, was drawing water because she was a young woman. She was drawing water, maybe preparing to eat, preparing to cook. And um, remember that this time Mary was betrothed to Joseph, meaning she was engaged to Joseph. Joseph was supposed to marry Mary. And then she receives this message from an angel. I think it wasn't easy because I can just imagine having an angelic being speak to you. First of all, we know that she had fear. She asked questions. Who is this who's talking to me? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to respond? But we see that as we go on, Mary actually said and answered, let it be so as God has commanded. Mary was called highly favored, even in the scripture. You see, God called Mary to be a mother of Jesus. And that's the calling we also receive most of the time from God. We are called differently. We are called to be his children. We are called to give ourselves and our lives to God. But how often do we usually resist? How often do we want to hold back and just not tell God, let it be as you please with my life? Remember Mary was young. And she would, in her life, she was probably excited that a wedding would be coming up where she would marry Joseph. A lot of us would have refused and said, there's no way, no way. I'm going to have a child before I get married. Especially that I have a man who's already willing to marry me. But that was not Mary. A humble and obedient young woman she was. She went on and told, um, and told God, that whatever he wanted to do with her life, let it be. She trusted God, that God will do that which is right. She was told that she would carry a child who would be blessed. She would carry a child who would be king. She would carry a child actually who would be our savior. And she did go ahead and give up. Um, her joy and comfort she gave up her comfort to um, allow herself carry that child um, what do we see happening Mary did appreciate the call that God had given her boys and girls do we appreciate the call when we actually hear God calling us to give our lives to him. Mary was exemplary. Mary was special. She was special in that much as she probably didn't even want to question, to ask, to say, what would Joseph think if I go to Joseph and talk to him and tell him, oh, I'm actually with child. She didn't go that far because she trusted God and she trusted God would do what was right 
for her. She trusted and just gave it all to God. Now, um, as that was going on with Mary, and she accepted that whatever God wanted to do with her life, he could do. Something also happened to Joseph. Joseph, whilst he was sleeping, also had an encounter. In his dream, he had an encounter and he was talked to also to say, the woman you are uh, about to marry will be with child, but go ahead and marry her because this woman is going to carry a great child, is going to carry a person who would be a savior to everyone, a savior to us fallen people in this world. And Joseph did not argue either. He also trusted that the God who was speaking to him would make it right. He did not decide to go to Mary and start questioning to say, this child that you are, going, that you are carrying now, um, how are we going to explain to the people? They trusted God. But much as they trusted God, I'm sure in their heads they were thinking, oh, um, how are we going to explain to the people? How are people going to look at us that we are actually having a child before we are married? Remember, both Joseph and Mary lived lives that were upright. And they knew that having a child before they were married meant something very bad. It meant that they had been sinful. But because of their trust in God, and knowing that the will of God has to come to pass, they decided that it shall be and it shall come to pass. They trusted that God will work things all for the better for both of them. Of course, Mary was concerned for, doing, for wanting to do the right thing. She was concerned because having lived a life that was upright, she was concerned that um, having a child before she married would carry with it a negative uh, name, a negative uh, connotation. Uh, it would carry a negative sense. And she wanted to do the right thing. But she still trusted God. And gave up herself, gave up her body. That she could carry a child that the Holy Spirit would give. Remember that much as Mary carried the child in her womb, that child was not Joseph's um, seed that she carried, was not Joseph's child. Joseph, yes, was the earthly father. He was going to uh, raise Jesus, but that child was conceived through the Holy Spirit. After Mary learned that uh, she was expecting and that um, probably at that time, Joseph also spoke to her and assured her that he equally had been spoken to, um, they both decided they would go ahead with their marriage and that they would keep the child, the blessed child that was going to come out of Mary's womb. But as we read, remember that nothing is impossible with God. And that is why Mary, even not having been married, not having known any man, she was able to carry a child in her womb because God is a God of impossibilities. And we learn that while she was also carrying, while she was also told, that they was going to carry a child. She was also told that Elizabeth, who was advanced in age, Elizabeth, who had grown to the point that everybody considered her barren. Everybody thought she's an old woman. She can't have a child at this time. But Mary was told that Elizabeth was also carrying a child. 
an impossible thing at her age, but God made it happen. So Mary left and decided to go and visit Elizabeth. She left and went and visited Elizabeth. Let us see the song that she sang when she visited Elizabeth. And we're going to look at scripture. And now we are looking at Luke chapter 1. And we'll read from verse, um, we're going to read from verse uh, 46 all the way to 55. And it reads, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to, the, to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Now, we see in this song that Mary rejoiced. Mary was happy. Mary expressed her gratitude to God. Looking at her, a simple woman. You see, Mary recognized the fact that God did not choose her because she was special, she was mighty, she had wealth. We see from this song that Mary was a humble girl. She was a girl of low stature, if we, if we should call it that. And also, Joseph, the man she was about to marry, was not a man who had so much. Joseph, remember, was a carpenter. But these are the two people God decided would be the ones to actually bring to this world a savior, to present to us our savior. You see, God and us men and women, we are different. In that the way God chooses people is not the way we choose people. Look, even sometimes at school, when you are trying to pick friends, when you are trying to choose a prefect, when uh, people are trying to choose a montress, most of the time, we want to look at what can this person bring for us? What can this person um, present to us? We look at qualification of uh, a position in our earthly eyes because we are human beings with a fallen nature but God does not choose people like that and that is why he chose Mary who considered herself a bond servant and Joseph who was a carpenter to be the people to be the parents of this Jesus who was to be born Jesus who would have a kingdom that would last forever. Because God is not man. That he will look at qualification of a chosen person the way we do. Even in whatever state we are, you should know that God still calls you and me. He, called, he calls adults. He calls children to himself. He calls them that they may believe in him. Remember, even in scripture, when the disciples were trying to put away the children, Jesus said, let the children come to me. Meaning, 
even in your um, young ages, you should be able to know and to think that and to actually realize that God is not waiting for you to be an adult, for him to choose you and use you. Yes, in our time, of course, because we already have a savior, he's not going to choose another savior. But God can use you in a mighty way. He can use you to speak to that bully at school. So that their hearts may be changed. He can use you to be a person who's caring, a person who shares with those who don't have. Sometimes we have friends at school who don't have anything in their lunch boxes. Some don't have food. Some of them come from homes where it is difficult for them to have a meal. And there you are, sometimes you go with big lunch boxes. But because our hearts have not given, um, we have not given our hearts to God, God has not touched us and changed us. We have been stubborn, we have been proud, our hearts are so hardened that even when we see somebody in need, when we see somebody we need to help, we hold back and decide not to hold, not to give what we should share. That is one way God can use you. God can use you to pray for people. God can use you, even in your young age, to pray for parents who are unsaved. God can use you to pray for parents who are not having a relationship that they should have as parents. That is how mighty God is. He does not look at you as an adult or wait for you to be an adult, wait for you to be a person who will be walking and respected in the society for him to use you. Because God and us are different. Remember our focus is still on Joseph and Mary and how they followed Christ. Because there were people who decided, even in their ages, they were young, they were not married yet, to live for Christ, um, to obey Christ, to be humble, not to be pompous and boastful. God used them. And even when he used them, they did not go about boasting. They didn't go about boasting, saying, yes, me as Mary, you people might be, consider me, might be considering me a nobody. Here I am. I will bring forth a king. I have been chosen by God. No, no, no. That is not what Mary did. Mary was humble. She praised God. She did not boast. She did not take pride in the fact that she had been given this great privilege that she will forever be called a blessed woman because of the fact that she was carrying Jesus. Those are the things we should actually emulate. Those are the things we should copy from the life of Mary. Mary trusted God. Mary was humble. Mary gave herself to be used by God. She did not look at her own interest. That is the Mary who carried Jesus. We also look at Joseph, a carpenter he was, coming from a small city of Jerusalem, of um, Nazareth, a city that really was considered a very small city. In Zambia, we have uh, Lusaka as the big, big city with so many people, with so much activity. Um, now we have bridges that uh, most cities don't have. It's a big town and when something is happening or people are about to choose somebody to in a good position, people would be thinking, ah, somebody should be picked from Lusaka. But imagine Jesus being born from parents uh, who were from a town of Nazareth, a small town. Maybe in Zambia we can liken it to Luansha, 
a tiny, tiny town. But they were used to do great things. Now, we go on um, to see that much as everything had happened from the time uh, the angel spoke to Mary, the time Joseph was spoken to, uh, Mary visiting Elizabeth, so much had gone on. But then we come to a point where we do realize that God keeps his promise. God does keep his promise. And even when he spoke to Joseph and told Joseph that he should go ahead and marry Mary, that they would carry a child, a child who would be born. Um, and of course, even when the angel spoke to Joseph, there were instructions that were given. This child will have to be born in uh, Bethlehem, in a manger. You have to travel from Nazareth to, to Bethlehem. Joseph did obey all those things. And we know that Jesus was eventually born in Bethlehem. They traveled and um, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But God kept his promise. He kept his promise in that much as Mary carried a child um, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Joseph went ahead and married her. The child that they were expecting to be king of all the earth was eventually born and indeed we call him king of kings. We call him our Lord of Lords. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise. And you see, even up to this time, God does keep his promises. He has promised that when we give our lives to him, he will never forsake us. He will never leave us. Sometimes, boys and girls, we are always holding back. Even when we hear God's call, we always think, I'm in a class, I'm in a group of friends, and we do all these bad things together. We laugh at the teacher when she's teaching in a bad way. We don't laugh with the teacher. We laugh at our teacher in a bad way. And we do this in a group. We bully friends. We are stingy. We are mean to our little sisters and brothers. We are disobedient children. We sit down and ask ourselves and say, hmm, if I give myself to God, if I accept Christ as my savior, what will become of me? I might have no friends because the friends I move with are going to run away from me. But which better friend can you have if not Jesus? Which better friend can you have if not one who has promised not to leave you or forsake you? You should know that when you hear God's call, do not harden your heart. Give yourself to Christ. Surrender your life to him. Be obedient to his call, just the way Joseph, just the way Mary were obedient to God's call. And know that God will always keep his promise. He will never leave you or forsake you. Take time to think about your life. Take time to go through your life and see these things that I do, do they please God at all? If not, give your life to Christ. He is our friend and will remain our friend forever. Thank you so much for sitting here and listening to this story, listening to this word from scripture that we have learned about Mary and Joseph. Learning from Mary and Joseph in a totally different way from the story of Christmas, from the story of the celebration that we usually have. I'm glad that you have been here and do hope and pray 
that even next Sunday, we are going to come and sit and learn together about another person, about other people who actually followed Christ. So as we close, let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before you to thank you for the lesson that we have learned today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can draw lessons from a humble woman like Mary, a woman who obeyed you, a woman who trusted you, a woman who gave herself to you. We are grateful, Lord, that we've been here to learn from Joseph, a man who was considered a person without even a very noble character, a very noble uh, position. He was merely a carpenter. We learn, Lord, that you are able to use anyone to fulfill your purpose. Heavenly Father, even as we close, open our hearts, O oh Lord. Help us to reflect on our own lives and give ourselves to you when you call us. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.